So the last sulfide that we have in our sulfide group, we've already covered galena, sphalerite, chalcopyrite, and pyrite, it's going to be marcasite. And you might recognize this chemical formula as the same as pyrite. So before we even get started looking these, the main difference is going to be that this is an orthorhombic mineral instead of an isometric mineral like pyrite. And so the first thing that my mind goes to is a different crystal form. And that's going to be evident as we get into it a little bit later. So when I'm just looking at this in front of me, this is a really beautiful sample here, by the way, like almost museum quality. So nice. And these are kind of more common little chunks that you'll see. So I've got the full gambit here. So the first thing that I notice is the metallic luster. We're in the sulfides. This is pretty typical. We're used to it by now. But looking at this sample, we have this beautiful metallic luster. Um, but it has a unique color in the group so far. Galena had that really kind of silvery color. Pyrite had that really light um, silvery gold. And then this has almost like a dusty, bronzy, darker silver. Um, it almost looks dirty and it does tarnish easily, but it doesn't um, tarnish in the same way chalcopyrite does with lots of beautiful colors because that's the copper in there. This is just going to be iron. So, and we can see here, um, first thought, metallic luster, great. The next thing, like I said a little bit earlier, is going to be the crystal form. So now that we're in the orthorhombic crystal system, um, we're not seeing those same kind of super high symmetry crystals that we did in something like pyrite. Let's get a good close up of these guys here. They are almost like platy crystals instead of being balls or cubes. We've got these platy crystals that are sticking out. And crystal form is actually one of the largest diagnostic pro or most important diagnostic properties of marcasite here. And this crystal form here, where we've kind of got almost these little mountain peaks jutting out like this, this is a diagnostic crystal form called, we call it a coxcomb because it kind of looks like the top of a rooster. And this one is a good example of that as well here. And this is, um, if you see this kind of crystal shape here, your first thought, especially since it's metallic, should be, oh, maybe this is marcasite. This one has a couple different kind of bladed forms together. But you can see they're all kind of coming from this central area and kind of nucleating out almost into this coxcomb, coxcomb shape. So it's metallic. It has this really kind of dusty, dirty looking color. It has a pretty typical density for a sulfide, right? It's pretty dense, um, not super dense, but we are working with an iron sulfide here. So it's got some heft to it for sure. Let's give it a good streak test here. So I've got a couple other things. Don't, don't pay any mind to those. Let's see what we've got. So like most of the other sulfides, we've got a great streak. It's really dark again. Um, and so we know that we're in that sulfide family, but the color and the crystal shapes and crystal forms are actually going to be what helps us diagnose it in the um, sulfide family. So it's pretty, it's pretty soft a little bit. It'll powderize on the streak plate, but it's about a six on the hardness scale. So we could probably scratch some glass with it or if we have a little bit of a softer glass. Um, but the color, the metallic luster, this crystal form of the coxcomb, and then that streak are all going to be diagnostic properties for something like marcasite.